Namaskar, this is Saurav and on my digital talk show, we have Rob Peck, the director of O3M Digital Marketing. It's one of the agency based out of Chennai. Welcome to my show, Rob. Thank you for having me. Excited oh, to be here. My pleasure. So Rob is uh, one of the Google AdWords expert and I've been knowing him since quite some time right now in the Chennai market and he's been doing pretty well. I see his vernacular Tamil advertisements all across. Uh, he runs that for his agency. Rob is known for two things, of course, for Google advertisements and uh, his great sense of humor. <laughs> Are you going to start with a joke, Rob? Oh, I got some jokes. Um, what's the best place to hide a dead body? Second page. Second page of Google, yeah. that's right. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, let's get started with the questions. Are you game for a digital talk show, Rob? You bet. I'm in. Lo lovely. So, Rob, my first question to you is, how meaningful is vernacular advertisement in Google AdWords? I see you do a lot of advertisements in yeah. Tamil and any insights that you would like to throw here? Yeah, I mean, I think the regional language ads have been tremendously important to our business, and our clients, and most importantly, um, their customers. India is a very unique place in that just about everyone speaks English online. But it doesn't mean that they like to speak English, right? Everyone has a certain amount of ability. But oftentimes, if you're looking to convey sort of a, an emotional message or really create a connection, that's going to happen in the mother tongue. And then just by nature of us being in Chennai, a lot of that's going to be in Tamil. Okay. So we've seen growth in two areas. One is pure vernacular ads. The other one that I, I personally like a lot is adding a little local flavor or sort of keywords into English language ads. Okay. So both, both are... Like right. a Tanglish. Is exactly. It, like Tanglish and English is kind of a way forward is what he's saying in advertisements because it just connects with the local audience very closely. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay. What are three latest trends to follow in Google advertisements according to you? Sure. So I think all of them really work within the core trend of machine learning and artificial intelligence but three key things we have our eyes on one would be the responsive search ads i really like those because essentially you're loading in a bunch of headlines a bunch of descriptions and then google's using its machine language learning ability to um put together the best pairs depending on the unique audience Okay. Um, next is conversion optimization settings in Google. For years and years and years, I didn't like it. I didn't trust it. But finally starting to win me over where we are seeing pretty strong results, leaving a lot of the bidding optimization into Google's hands. And then third is um, matched audiences and custom affinity audiences. Google is really going much deeper into audience targeting, moving beyond um, sort of placement and even in, in placement and even content into the intent targeting. And that's really exciting for us. Lovely. Uh, in a highly competitive space like real estate, uh, which I, I believe a lot of the cli uh, clients in the market will share today. Yes. Uh, what makes a lot of difference, search or display? As I see real estate ads are competitive and becoming expensive day by day. Right. So I think, you know, honestly, it depends on the individual project, what's going to work best. But I think the main thing we're seeing or the main shift we're seeing is optimizing towards lead quality, not just the number of leads. So be it search or display, actually, in some cases, you're working to get fewer leads. Right. If you have a, pro a property that costs, you know, a, a unit that costs two crore, mention the price in the ads. Conversion rate's going to go down because it's very high value. Um, number of leads are going to go down because it's very high value. Not everyone can afford it. But you're going to see that the quality goes up. So I think it's important to work with the analyst, perhaps more importantly, kind of work with or even train the clients into looking towards lead quality not just bringing in a high volume of leads okay. because yeah it just works better okay how effective is dynamic keywords and adwords do you use that often it's like the latest we trend we use it yeah. sometimes and carefully the biggest thing is never ever ever use it with broad match or the broad match modifier that's where you can run into competitive concerns either bad search term showing okay. um, the, the, you know, don't do justice to the brand or 
a competitor's name showing if someone's doing a competitor plus geo search. So we need to be really careful. However, if you're talking phrase or exact match, yeah, it can work well. Okay. Uh, do you have any example of a user case where we have smartly used the intelligence, customer insights to take certain decision with respect to display or search? Something that you believe that you know was a game changer. I mean, the bi the biggest thing is really digging into the customer journey, right? Because remember, even one individual customer, and when you look at linear modeling or data driven attribution, not just looking at last click you will see that they both play their part. So for me, it's really digging into that customer journey and then making sure you're present all along the way. So I guess if there was one thing um, specific to real estate or in general is really getting into the data and understanding the full purchase path. If we were selling like an inexpensive t-shirt, you might expect one click, one purchase. But when you're talking about property, which is the highest value investment most people make, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take months. Search, display, social, video, all of it needs to play its part. Lovely. I believe for 2019, the best display Canva would be YouTube, and I think for 2022, especially with search, display, true view ads, and retargeting. Uh, what's your take? Like, do you think YouTube is the way forward? Yeah, I agree. We're, we've been going pretty aggressive on YouTube, and we continue to. Um, one sort of roadblock we face is, of course, High quality video content often is more expensive to produce, of course, than text or images. Okay. So what we're seeing is a return of sort of the casual content. When you look at a lot of the best, most watched content on YouTube, how-to videos, tutorials, unboxing, these are not George Lucas level production endeavors. Two. It's just very casual communicating a message. So that needs to be the enabler. So not everyone has to spend lakhs on a video production. Then once they have some decent video, yeah, YouTube is fantastic. Cost per view is coming in very inexpensive. And just like you said, there is something for everyone in there. People forget YouTube, if it was a search engine, Two. would be the second largest one. Right. So those discovery ads certainly play their part. Bumper ads for people without an attention span. Um, biggest thing I see though is <clears throat> making sure you're not just running. It's not like a TVC play, TV placement where just put it there. There's a lot of optimization ability with Google Ads and YouTube that people aren't fully leveraging. So, you know, I see a lot of campaigns, people don't even upload the companion banner, these kind of things. It can be a performance vehicle if you're really working towards it. Super. Uh, any tool that you recommend uh, for Google AdWords that makes a life easier? Because all of us are majorly on dashboard, but besides yeah. this, any other tool that you make use of? Yeah, so I, mean, I think there's a few things that, that, that come to mind. First of all is dashboard is fantastic, but oftentimes using Data Studio or Sheets to get that data out into a file that's more um, you know, easier to manipulate, pivot tables, all that fun stuff. So whatever you're comfortable with, could be data studio integration, could be exporting to my old, good old fashioned Microsoft Excel, whatever it is, putting it into a spreadsheet tool to look at it. Um, and then another thing I'm seeing is people not looking at paid and organic together enough. Okay. And I think that's really important. So like at the very least, make sure search console analytics, Google ads are all linked together. Um, <laughs> beyond that, Honestly, the one paid tool I've really stuck with throughout the years is SEMrush. Um, SEMrush. I, I find it very valuable, primarily on the SEO side, but also um, their display research tool and their, their paid ads research tool is quite good. Okay. So SEMrush is one of the tools that uh, Rob often uses. Um, what is your take on Google Tag Manager? Uh, do you Have you stopped using Google Tag Manager for your... The, Yes. And landing yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, we use it a lot in our sort of standard onboarding checklist. Google Tag Manager is the default implementation. Um, at the very basic value is you need to only bother the web developer once and then you can place all your codes. So it gets rid of those time delays. The analyst can place his codes, tinker with their codes and do all that without having to bother the web dev. Then beyond that, it's going very powerful. Um, where, for example, schema markup, 
you can do through Google Tag Manager these days. A lot of the Google Optimize experiments you can do through Tag Manager. So yeah, we're, we're enjoying it. We use it that way. Okay. And what's your experience with the native advertisements? What alternative do you suggest? I'm sure you have tested a lot of things. So, sure. Yeah. What do you think is working really well? For these days? India, I really like uh, Columbia, which is Times Internet sponsored content platform. They own a big chunk of the Indian web. Right. So I think they're a great first place. Um, whereas like Taboola has the higher minimum. Outbrain can work, but I face sort of the limited ability to optimize in the past. Um, biggest thing for me for native content is. As marketers, we need to shift what we're saying. Like a search ad really should be sort of in your face. This is the price. This is why us. This is why now. This is the USP cost, right? Whereas native is going to be more storytelling. So it's not going to be like, you know, best wedding haunch and I, rate starting from blah, blah, blah. It's going to be more about discover how our mandapam makes weddings incredible. So we need to be prepared on the creative side for sort of longer form storytelling content. But yeah, it's a powerful tool, especially Super. with the ad blockers coming out. Super. Uh, Google Data Studio, uh, what's the importance? Uh, do you think uh, people need to really master that at the moment? Because a lot of Google AdWords specialists right. do not really understand how Google Data Studio works. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important because it makes, just like we were saying before, it takes the data out of the platform, which again is great, but there is a limited ability to really um, examine and process the data. So Google Data Studio integrates with Google Ads, it makes it and analytics and the other things, and makes it very easy to do so. So I think it's a great tool. However, if someone is more comfortable in Excel, for whatever reason, just sort of old habits die hard, use that because whatever's gonna, enable you to find the, the most actionable insights, use that. I think the future would be Data Studio because of the integration, uh, posted on cloud and all these things, but wherever you can mine the data the best, do that. Okay. What does an effective advertisement cop copy comprise of? Uh, the best case that you Right. Do? So I think, I mean, this goes back to traditional advertising. At the very least, be it like a physical sales meeting or just, you know, small, small simple search ad, I think you need to communicate why this, why us, and why now. So, why this, why yeah. us, and why now. So like, why this do you need the product? It's raining, you need an umbrella so you stay dry. Why us, why do you need to buy our umbrella? And why now to create that sense of urgency? So if I think if you capture those three, it should be a good ad. Extensions are lifelines. Which one has best work for you? So we do a lot in the SMB space. These are a lot of local search driven businesses. So I would have to go with location extensions. Location um, extensions. Yes. Okay. Um, getting, you know, getting that proper GMB map linked to your Google ads can be very powerful. The other thing is out of all of them, that helps measure the most incremental conversions because then you can start looking at map clicks and, and, and these kind of things. Right. Can Google My Business page be the alternative for landing pages and websites today? You know, for some strange reason, the Google My Business created websites don't support Google Analytics right now. If that was fixed, I think so. Because um, remember, when you're creating your GMB listing, if right. you click one extra button, you also get a website out of it. Right. Um, so I think in many cases it can. For local business, again, if you're expecting someone to like consume video content or purchase high-end fashion or things of that nature, you're going to still need your own website. But for the average sort of come into my shop, come into my restaurant, yeah, Google My Business is great. Now, with that said, people do need to go the extra mile to make sure it's a very complete listing. Um, and then that plus the free website can get you pretty far. Right. Can you share any mistake that you have done in your Google AdWords that you has that has been the biggest mistake? Oh, tons. Um, <laughs> yeah, plenty of them. Um, biggest one. Well, I think some of that is structure, and then some of that is actual actual whoopsies. Right. Years ago, in some cases, we would run multiple clients from the same Google Ads account. Again, this is many many years ago. That makes reporting a mess. That makes transparency a mess. Um, so definitely those sort of things. As far as more tactical um, mistakes, uh, letting dynamic keyword insertion 
run away with things, showing competitors' names in your ad. It's happened. I've done it many years ago. <laughs> okay, so Bob, uh, that's some honest confessions. One last question to you. What's the best way to go about Google advertisements? Go big bang, high budgets in a month, which I see a lot of brands doing. They are all across YouTube, display, search, crazy visibility because they have a campaign rolling or have the budget spread over three to five months. What is the strategy that you would suggest? Right. So I think we all know from the old ASAP's fables, the slow pace wins the race, right? Where oftentimes when people really want that initial bang, I see them quickly fizzling out. Right. Where it's like, this is all we can afford. Let's put it into Google Ads. It better work. That's not the best way to be. We know that campaigns get better over time as you optimize them, as the features come out, all these things. So even to the point when we have a long-term client coming on board, we'll typically start the first month at a third of their expected budget. That gives our analysts the opportunity to explore before there's like tremendously tight CPL and ROI constraints. Um, so it should be an upward trend. Okay. Often, again, when we see someone start real big, they'll usually fizzle out um, versus really growing, growing, growing. So you're saying consistently, spend yeah. wise, analyze, and then start. Exactly. And then like values. once those metrics are in place, an analyst won't have a problem asking for a much bigger budget. But if a huge budget is forced on them that first day, right. it can be difficult. All right. Uh, I think I've come to the end of the show. Uh, do you want to share anything to the audience at the end? No, just, you know, thank you for listening. Um, we are at the forefront of, specifically in India, the one of the fastest growing economies, fastest growing country, fastest growing internet base. So we're really excited to take part in it. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Rob, for being here. Happy for to being be here. part of the Inspiring Fridays. Thank you so much for listening to us. Stay tuned. Do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and do follow me on Instagram. Thank you. Goodbye.